Oh my goodness. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Would you bring them up? Come here. Come here, please. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't, I'm sorry. I think you just bring something here in my mind flip. So I, 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 I didn't see the whole comedy. Mom and over here is it's beautiful. See, I say hello. And I got that cool. Do you love him now? Yeah. You proud? Always. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Father. Forgive me. I have seen servants upon horses. Servants on horses. That kind of makes you think, like, oh, this should be. And I've seen princes who are walking the earth like they're servants. It's like there's an identity crisis. Anybody follow me? Yeah. Like there's, like, uh, maybe uh, somebody doesn't know their role. Yeah. Or maybe somebody took on somebody else's role. Yeah. Something that I, I, I love seeing this commercial. I tried to get it so I could show it to you this morning. There were two things I wanted to show you. One is about that movie, Identity Theft, of the woman who takes uh, the man's name and everything and draws out everything from his account and, you know, all that. And the other one that I love seeing is just a commercial. It's, it's the LifeLock commercial. Has anyone seen it? Come on, raise your hand if you've seen it, that LifeLock. It's where they've got a tractor trailer and they've got a giant license with the person's name on it, their picture, and their SSI. Right? I mean, is that crazy? Because everybody knows everybody. If you give me your SSI, you know, I really don't need to see your face. I can tell you if you can get a part today or not. I mean, I remember in my days, I must be that old, that, that they had to see you. Uh, they had to know that you're a real person. You know, nowadays, it's just, they just need your SSI. That, 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 as a matter of fact, I only need the last four digits. That's all I need. Last four digits. I don't, no, 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 no. Just give me the last four digits. That's all. And, and, and I mean, the life lock is identity theft. It's, it's a protector against identity theft. Are you following me? Amen. And today you may say, well, you know, I don't know, don't know exactly the way you're going on this. Listen, if there's to be a revival in this church, if there's to be a people that really surrender, not to say, you know, I know the man upstairs, he's my homeboy. I know the guy upstairs, you know, I, I know him. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and if we're expected to make it personal, to make it real, to make it alive, then we had better start taking this serious. Are you following me? Amen. I know when I was on that park bench 32 years ago, and I had it here not because it's a monument, not because I prayed to it, but so that I could remember. Every time I'm preaching, I can remember where I was, homeless in Philadelphia, how God found me, and how my grandfather of five beautiful children now. And a father of three. You, and a family that's all of you. Yes. I mean, I'm talking about the loneliest guy I can remember is me. And how God has changed all that around. If you can do it for me, you can do it for anybody. Yes. But if you think of this whole life lock thing, it's how, to, it's how to secure who you are so that no one else can steal it. You follow me? Yes. To secure who you are so no one else can steal it. But Jesus, excuse me, God here is talking about, you know, these people, they draw nigh to me with their lips, with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips. They say, God, God, Adonai, Elohim, all these things, Jehovah, but their heart is far from me. Come on, somebody say, amen, oh my, oh me, ouch, anything. Anybody follow me? Yeah, he's saying, they identify with me. They say they know me. They sing my praises, they sing my song, they say they identify with a greater power, greater than me. They say they know me, but he clearly says, yet their hearts are far from me. Amen. Amen. Then in order uh, to clarify that, I took, you to his, uh, I took you to Ecclesiastes 7.1. He says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes who are walking as servants upon the earth. And that should show you that if, uh, that if Solomon saw that, he saw that something was wrong. Something had happened. Something had happened that somebody took somebody's identity. Somebody took somebody's identity and became, uh, he became a prince or something like that. But maybe they're not. And in the New Testament, it speaks of people who identify with God, yet they're not. They're not. It says their hearts 
are far, far from him. Somebody say, hey, me or my, our, something. I want to share this with you. A man's story will give you an illustration. This is a person that had identity theft. They were 21 years old. They had just got married. They came to me and they said they, they can't get a house. Now, they're, now their credit, they didn't build up too much, but they had enough to at least have a clean name, right? But they couldn't because they say that 15 years ago, they, they accrued $90,000 in debt. I'm thinking 15 years ago, it would have made you six years old. Is anyone following me? 15 years ago, that would have made you six. I don't know a six-year-old spending 90 grand. grand Anybody follow me? I don't know how, how a six-year-old could do that. And what happened was that mom sold the birth certificate to somebody. I don't know if you know that right down on Front Street that you can buy a birth certificate for $750. Is anyone following me? That means that somebody will take on your name, somebody will take that SSI, somebody will take over your that your person, who you are, that last name, everything about you. And they can do things that probably you wouldn't condone, that would make you unhappy. And later on, if you try to do something in your own name, find out that you are wrecked, that your name is mud, that you've been besmirched, that you've been uh, uh, just taken through the mud, that, uh, that there's this giant bill, and then try to unwind that. Man, it's like taking a bunch of a thread and putting it all together and then try to untangle it. Come on, has anybody followed me? Has anybody ever had this? Like, I remember me. I remember me in Philly where I'd be there and I'd get stopped by the police in a car or something and they'd tell me I had a ticket. Why hadn't I been to court for it? I'm thinking, I don't remember this. I had a brother who would sometimes say I'm Jimmy Rivera. And they'd use your name. Are you following me? Yes. Something as simple as that. It's just, just a small lie, right? Just, just a, a little lie just to say that you're somebody else or some other name. And that person's character, their name, could be torn apart by. Are you following me? Yes. How much more could, could God's name be torn apart if we say that, if we say that, come on now, that we identify with him, that we know him, that we love him, that we've got a relationship with him. Our relationship with him, that we're inheritors, that we're adopted, that we've taken on his last name, that we're, I, I, that we're God's children, and then don't, and then don't act like it. Oh. If anybody's a parent here, you know that you've been around other people that have invited, uh, invited you to their house, and you go to their house, you take your children there, and you stop outside and say, don't embarrass me. Right? Because everybody's going to know that, that, that big note, that's, I know who dad that is. It's, you know, that's, that's his kid, right? Right? Or something like that, right? And, and so all of us are very conscious about that, you know. Don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass our family name. Don't embarrass us. My goodness, how could you have done that to our name? How could you have done that to our, our whole name, our family? It's plastered on the front page of the newspaper, right? Or something like that. Anybody follow me? I want you to think of identity theft. What would happen if somebody stole your identity? What would happen if they took away who you are, what you are, where you've been, what your dreams were, what you wanted to do, and your friendships and your relationships, and stole them from you? Come on now, it. Amen. Need to know if I have your attention. Amen. See, this all comes from Ecclesiastes 7.1. I have seen servants on horses. Servants don't ride horses. And princes who are walking the earth as servants. Something happened. Something with our identity happened. What you know? So this person had had 90 grand in bills at 21 going on 22, trying to buy a house. And at the age of six, he had a $90,000 bill, which they needed to fix all of that up even before they could do anything. And if anybody's ever tried to deal with those credit companies, it's just a nightmare. You just go from circle to circle to, you just go on and on and on and on. Anybody follow me? Amen. So the next thing is God's story. Number two, I want to tell you God's, God's story about how, about how somebody could uh, spiritually steal his identity. Buckle up. God's story. 
I'm going to give you an illustration. Spiritual identity theft. I want you to imagine using God's identity, taking on his name, and attaching myself to his life, to his story, to his experience, to his our relationships, and then not living it. Telling people that I represent God, telling people that I am a Christian, telling people that I am a man of God, telling people that I love the Lord, telling people that I am, and that yet, as soon as I leave these doors, I act like hell when I get outside. Does anyone follow me? That's my identity theft. That's why he said these people worship me with their mouths, they praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their hearts, who they really are in the dark. That is the definition of character. Who you are when the lights are out. Who you are when no one's watching. You follow me? I want you to imagine that you're using God's identity, taking on his name, attaching yourself to all the relationships he has, telling other Christians, there's so many Christian girls, uh, girls and women and men, who have been hurt because some guy who comes to hey, you know, I'm a believer, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, and they'll sing a song or two, say a Christian phrase or two, and before you know it, they're right in the house. And then that old man comes out. Anybody follow me? That old man comes out. What they did was learn a brand new trip. And, and, and that's the last thing that we want to do at the Timothy house or any place else, is teach you a new way to manipulate. Somebody say amen if you follow me. It's teach you a new way. You know what I mean? That you've done this and robbed your family, robbed the medicine cabinet, stole the gold out the house, got this, took the car one day, took the car one day, you did all that. Now let me teach you how to do it as a Christian. Brand new, fresh start. Amen. Just act like Jesus. Identity theft. And if you want to have a revival and have people get on fire for God and have people serve God around here, we've got to identify that that can happen to us very easily and say, no, not in my house, not in my life. This will not happen to me. I will not put on airs like I am the son of God, I am the son of the most high God, and then not live like that. Jesus has a certain amount of responsibility to say, I'm going to take care of my child. I'm going to take them home. This is my name. This is my responsibility. I'm going to do that. That's how God would want you to be. Amen. No more excuses. No more yeah, that's, you know, I had a disease. And just, you know, I, it was all, I, I don't know what happened. That's a bunch of baloney. Amen. All of your accomplishments. Think about that. All my accomplishments. I know where I've been. I know what I've already done. I know what I've tried. All my history, everything, completely a lie. Second thing I want to share with you is amnesia. I want you to think about amnesia for a minute. Th uh, third thing, I'm sorry. Third, uh, third word is amnesia. Everybody knows what amnesia is. I, I got to, uh, my stepfather, he died and, uh, He didn't know who we were. Man. He had Alzheimer's. He, he didn't know who we were. I know I've told many of you how, you know, a, a very abusive drunk, you know, as a kid. I was the last one from my father. My father died at 30 years old. Nobody knows what happened. But he was 30 years old when he died. I saw pictures of him, a strong young man that never should have died, but something happened. My stepfather jumped in and took over his girlfriend, who was my mom, who was a good looking girl, I saw pictures, uh, but what he didn't know was that there was still one bun in the oven, that was me. So, so when I came out, this man had like a hatred for me, like, like a hatred, like, like, like he could see, he could see his friend in me, like I look just like my father apparently, that there's something in my nose, a, a, an eye that's smaller than the other, a one ear. I don't know why God made me like that, but what happened? I look in the mirror and I thought, is this ear nose? What's going on? Just, you don't have to lie. That's not funny. That's, yours is low, too. I see some of this. that old out there. But I remember that I went back to tell him, how I forgive you. Look at Perdono. Look at Perdono. I, I forgive you for what you did. I put my hand out, and this man was a big man. He towered in front of me, and he just stood in front of me. I thought, I'm not going to let him hit me. I'm a big boy now. I put my hand out again. I said, Yo te perdono. 
I see my mom over there crying, all these knickknacks. Puerto Ricans always have knickknacks, you know, clock with a ship with two horses, stuff like this. Thriller. And I see her crying, and she had this rag, she was in the kitchen. She said, I like this, Jimmy, then I come. Then I come, Jimmy, come here, Jimmy. I remember coming over there, and she said to me, she grabbed me and hugged me. She knew what I was trying to do. I was trying to reconcile with my father. I was trying to, I was trying to leave him off the hook. And you follow me? I mean, he's getting going. I let him off the hook. Forget about that. Many of us, you know, you know, I mean, honestly, there should be a chair next to us and a guy in a red cap carrying all our issues around. Because we, I mean, we, we don't go nowhere unless we have all our issues with us. Everything comes with you. Anybody follow me? And if you want to start new, says, I am a new kid. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. If I really believe, if I really believe that that's my new identity, I need to let that stuff go. Stuff that was in the past, it, uh, listen, it's like concrete. After it dries and hardens, you can't move that. And no need to jackhammer it and take it into your future. Many of us are bound. I'm telling you, many of us, our future is crippled because we keep dragging our past into it. Amen. So I go to my father, I try to reconcile. My mother grabs me, puts her arms around me, and tells me, this guy's el tiene Alzheimer. And this is how he can it. And this is how I look at him, Chavo Prieto. He don't know what a little dark, he don't know what a black pen is. He doesn't know who you are. Are you following me? And in my own mind, I remember thinking, this is so unfair. Because I'm trying to do the manly thing, the, the right thing, right? I mean, I'm, I mean, come on, God, I'm trying to do the right thing here. Shouldn't I get a break? Throw me a bone here. And it's not until I realized that God was trying to say, it's not about how you make things right. It's about you letting it go for you, not for him. You let it go for you, so that you can be free. Think of your identity. Think of who you are. Think of everything that you drag in. Think of, listen, I have people that I'll never be like my father. I'll never be like my mom. I'll never be like my dad. I'll never be like my father. I'll never be like, and they wake up in 30 years and look in the mirror and guess who they see? <laughs> they see their mom and dad, don't they? They wake up in 30 years and they say, oh my God, I look just like, I scream just like it. Shut up, shut up, what are you doing? Leave that alone. And it's like, oh my goodness, I am my father. Anybody ever see a car on the highway and a big tractor trailer? What do you do? You either step on the gas, you got a giant windshield and you keep looking in the rear view mirror that's this little to see where he's at. Right? Because you keep your eyes on it. Right? Or if you stay too close to it, it says that you actually feel like you're going to crash into the tire. So, uh, so that's what happens with people in relationships in our life. People that we hate or that have hurt us or that have harmed us or that have done something to us, we keep on looking at them and looking at them and swearing that we'll never be like them. And in all, all that looking and observation and stare, we become like the very thing we swore we'd never be like. Identity, our identity is then molded by somebody in our past and we become that now. Can you imagine? There's so many of us who aren't even who are really supposed to be, who God intended you to be. Amen. It says sin is a word that was used by Paul, and it's an archery term. It's an archery term there in the Greek. It means to miss the mark, to miss God's mark of his calling for your life. To sin is to miss the mark of God's intended purpose for your life. Amen. Anybody follow me? So God intended me to be one thing, and that's dead center bullseye. And I miss that because I'm living what somebody else expected me to be, what somebody else wants me to be, what somebody else says I ought to be, what somebody else says I ought to become, what somebody else. How many of you know that everybody's got a plan for your life, but you got to live your own? Everybody in your family, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sister, your wife, your ex-wife, your friends, your son, everybody's got a plan on how they like to see you live. But you better find out who you are in God and live that. Yeah. So in amnesia, I want you to think about it. That's the sum of who you are. It's, 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 the, it's the everything of who you are. Everything.
everywhere that you've been, everything that you've done, every relationship that you've touched, gone. Gone. Can you imagine that? Such a disease that it would just steal your identity. Or sometimes it doesn't do that. It just strangles it up so that you're, uh, you're back in 1958, in 19... 1999 and 2014 and you don't know from day to day until it finally just robs you and 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 takes away your identity. Can you imagine that that some of your past that's exactly what's happening? Those things that you don't forgive yourself for and let go in your life, they haunt you, they haunt your dreams, they follow you around and they fight a little bit of you each day. They take a little until you finally look at me and say, who the heck am I? Who am I? Who is this guy? I swear I'd never be like them, but my goodness, do I look like them? Do I act like them? Do I sound like them? Amnesia, all your goals, all your dreams, all your future is gone. It's just gone. You can't make a new friendship and you'll forget about it in 10 minutes. Only thing it's good for is to hide your own Easter eggs. You can look for them that evening. <laughs> That's funny but sad because, because Alzheimer's is, is horrible. We need to pray as some young doctor would just, boom, find out. Get it. Right. Amen? Yes. Some young doctor figure out exactly what to do with it. Amen. So identity. Number four is who are you? My identity. Put that down if you take your notes. What is my identity? I'm going to give you a... I'm going to give you a Miriam Webster. Yeah, Webster's got a definition here. It says, uh, to be in a position or a condition that helps someone or something to better or more likely to succeed than others. A shorter definition is a good or, or a desirable a condition that puts you in a favorable or superior condition. A good or desirable condition. That's what I'm hoping for the men and women who come to this church, is that you'll find yourself, you know, don't hold on to your past. Don't, uh, listen to me, don't let your future be held hostage by your past. Amen. Some of us have to learn to forgive ourselves for what was done. It was done. If I gotta take some responsibility for it, I'll take the responsibility for it. But as far as me and my life and my house, the balance of my life belongs to Jesus. Amen. Belongs to the Lord. And I'm not letting anything no bad habits, no old habits, no habits from anybody else. But some of us just get far enough to crash and burn because we don't know how to deal with the unknown. And God will lead you to places that you've never been, take you to places that you've never been, and, 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 and it just scares us. Somebody say amen. You follow me? But how can there be a revival until we find out who you are? I want to turn you on. I want to hit the on switch on your life. Amen. On your life. Not on the identity crisis. Person will like, like, I must have OCD. I, I've never heard of so many pills being handed out for so many things as in this age right now. Right. I mean, everybody's OCD, ADD, STP needs oil and everything. I mean, they, <laughs> right or wrong, all right? Amen. I mean, are you, honestly, uh, years ago, I did have an EpiPen because I'm allergic to... I'm allergic to peanuts and to bees, or they'd have an asthma inhaler, right? Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, boy, you, uh, you take kids out and you need a suitcase. ADD, PhD, STP, DDD, uh, Cheerios, uh, more toasted than a box of cornflakes, or whatever, you know, weeds, uh, uh, right or wrong, somebody say amen, right? Why is that? That's because we're all carrying our issues along with us, all of us. And I'm here to tell you today, let that Go. Amen. Yes. God says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, for I am a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away, and all things are becoming Amen. new. Process, becoming new. Yes. And you've got to let go of some of that old. And that's going to be the scariest step of faith that you take is when you say, I'm going to let go of what I know. I'm going to let go of what I'm saying. Let go and step out into the unknown and become the person. Stuff he 
because they thought I was stupid and they didn't realize that I was just beat so much every night. I, I never said Father God like this, say, I want you to think what I'm going to do to you tonight. You just think about it all day. Imagine that. John F. Kennedy died. I was out on the stoop. They had a little stoop where they pulled the flag down. And I know now because I was in the court, but they pulled it down at half mass. I was sitting there, and the guy that pulls it down, he pulls the flag down. He was looking down my shirt. He went like this. He said, come on with me. Got, you know, at that time, you know, just, okay. He just followed him in. They took me into a room, and, and they had a nurse, another nurse. It was all white. I remember that. And a bunch of people, a bunch of people came in and they took my shirt off and ah, I heard them go like that. Two or three started crying. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. On, on the day that John F. Kennedy was shot. I remember it. I remember it. Because they all said, oh my gosh. And I know that nowadays, I know nowadays, I know children and youth be right in my house and they be taking the kid away, right? Yeah. But back then they did nothing. They did nothing. So we, we did what? Held that stuff in our heart, held it inside, held the hate, held everything. Yeah. Knew that people knew about it, so we thought, I know you knew about it. So so now well, we hate them, and we got to let that go. Or it will become a part of your identity forever. Yeah. And you don't realize that your identity has been hijacked. It's been stolen, and it is not what God intended for you to be. Right. Are you following me? God intended you to be free. God intended you to be what I'm doing next. Just be open to what I'm getting ready to do. I've got so much in your life. You're so young and there's so much time for you. Thank you, Lord. Take advantage of that. Let go of the past and grab a hold of the future. Grab a hold of it. Man, if God, listen, if Jesus tarries another day, if God tarries one more day, then I get to love God. I get to love somebody else. I get to share the gospel. I get to meet a new friend. I get to talk about the Lord. I get to be with my grandkids. I get to love them. I get to care for them. That's everything. Enjoy your life. Amen. But having your love that is founded in Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Who am I? I'm the sum total of what everybody else made me to be. Amen. Some of us are. Is that true or not? Amen. I'm a little bit of my mom, a little bit of my dad, a little bit of this. I was at my daughter's house over the weekend, and this lady came over, and uh, she had only recently met uh, met uh, met met uh, my daughter's mom. I was in Marine Corps, so I had a daughter when it came out. You know, that's my daughter down there. I've been married to Debbie now for 30 years, faithfully, but I was never married married prior. But that's my daughter Jasmine. And this lady, uh, who's from Babylonia, by the way, she is a Babylonian. <laughs> she, she, she really is. And she came over to the house, and she said, uh, yesterday morning, she said, she said, you know, uh, because uh, Sandy's mother is, is known as, okay, I'll give you an example. There was a good stop fair last week, and there's a guy that, uh, that makes brooms, and he had all these brooms put out. And her husband, Joey, made a joke and said, hey, Sandy, I think, I, I, they got parking there for you. The broom, get it? The broom, she's a witch. Eh? I don't know, anybody get that? Are you making the same thing? All right, you got the same uh, to, uh, They got special parking for you because you're a witch, there's your broom. All right, and you follow me, so she's, uh, uh, she's just a, a mad woman. She's, she's always angry, always, always hurt, always, always hurt, you know, can't smile, can't say hello to nobody. And this woman, who's a good friend of Jasmine's and who's known her for a while now, finally met me about a month ago here, and then uh, and then over the weekend over there, and she says, "Ah, I was so confused as to why Jasmine was was from her until I met you, Father." And then I said, "Ah, that's why. That's where she gets all that goodness from, and that hope and all that." Are you following me? I didn't do that on a cause of an applause. It was just that that uh, we are a little bit of everybody. Amen. We've been hijacked. Our, 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 listen to me. Our identity has been hijacked by everybody who has ever had any influence on us. Are you following me? Yes. Anybody who's ever had a touch on our life, a way, something.
nothing to say about us. They have hijacked our identity. Yeah. And today is the day that we've got to release that and forgive ourselves, ourselves, and let it go so that we can go forward and become what God intended us to be. Yeah. Somebody say amen to yeah. I'll give you an example. My keys. My keys. I carry them. Of course, I lose them. Anytime I lose them, people say, check your pockets, and I find them. Right? Okay, my keys. I can get access to my house. Right? And you say, okay, amen. This is this. Yeah, right? I can get access to my house. I, I have the right uh, to be there because they're my keys. It's my house, right? Right. My life. Uh, I have friendships with people in my life. I have children in my life. And they're my children. I have access to them because they're my children. I have grandchildren. They're mine. And I have access to them. Why? Because of, uh, because of my relationship. I just want you to think about that. I have like all these things, and that's the difference between me or some stranger who came and knocked on the door because I'm Jimmy Rivera and said, no, you're not. Right or wrong, you follow me? That's why, that's why an identity thief never shows up at you at your front door. They stay far away, just far enough away for you not to see them, but, but close enough to destroy who you are while they're taking everything you are, everything that you should have, everything that should belong to you, everything that should be yours. Anybody follow me? Yes. I want you to think of God's keys for me and you. God's access keys. God's keys. God's keys will give me access to what? All that is God's. All that is His. Give me access. It will grant me a right to be in His presence. It grants me a right to have a relationship with Him. It grants me a right to be an inheritor of all the things. that. It grants me a right to have an intimate kind of a relationship with God. Amen. It grants me that right. Those are God's keys. Do you follow me? Amen. Here's the difference. Is that through God, I have a legal access to that, to all that is his, to use his name, and to be the benefactor of all his relationships, and, and to be an inheritor of all the promises, past, present, and eternal. Amen. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? So I think of my kids now. Number five. My kids. My kids that can get my attention a whole lot quicker than anybody else. And if they need me, my kids are certainly, you know, I, I don't know when it's going to happen. But if I die, I guess, you know, I want to get the fish tank, I want to get the motorcycle. I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't have much. It's all been a love affair for me. Amen. Love affair with God. Amen. It's never been about the money. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Get it? It's never been about the money. Amen. Amen. My kids that will get my attention. I've got a responsibility to them. Amen. My kids know right now. If they're ever, if they're ever alone, if they're ever homeless, if they ever have no place to go, there's no question about calling to find. Oh, it's just fine. You got a few good stay. Just there's no question. Come home. Come home. It's not, well, you know, you know, family should really only stay a week because anything longer than that, you want to kill them. Yeah, you, no, no, just, just, if my children are ever in a 911, come to daddy. Right. Yeah. And that's the way God is. If you're ever in a 911, come to daddy. Come to Allah. Yeah. Come to daddy. Amen. Kids get your attention. God's kids. Now this is you and I who say we're children of God. I'm almost done. Let me get you to ready to sing to, to play that song for me. And if anybody who can sing better than me come up here. That's not all. <laughs> so God's kids. Are you with me? God's kids. They get they get their attention. They know who they belong to. They know that they're inheritors so, so that they get all the best stuff from God. God's kids. He looks out for them. He cares for them. He loves them. He doesn't care what you've done. He's like that, uh, he's like that father on the prodigal son who, uh, who uh, when he sees the son coming to his senses in verse 17, Luke 15, he sees him come to his senses. He doesn't say, oh, what are those sandals, man? What are you doing? Why do you smell like camel dung? 
uh, 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 you know, what's going on? What's up with that hairstyle? Oh my God, take a shower before mom sees you. Uh, uh, the father doesn't say, he just says, come here. Come here and he puts his arms around you. He doesn't care how he looks. doesn't care how he smells. He doesn't care where he's been. He doesn't care what happened. He doesn't care when it happened. He just cares that he's home. Amen. Amen. And he saved us, my baby. That's my child. And when we say I'm a child of God, I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm a child that belongs to God the Father, Son, and Spirit. I'm a child of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He doesn't want to know about your past. He says, if I am forgiven it, what are you doing remembering it every day? Amen. Let it go. Free yourself. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So in God's name, our identity is sealed. By the Holy Spirit. I preached that to you a couple of weeks ago. See it. By the Holy Spirit. All my experiences are forgiven. They are forgiven if they're bad. If they were good ones, then they may be grow in God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All my relationships, I know my father. I know I'm a child of the Most High. I know who raised me up to righteousness from unrighteousness. Amen. I know who raised me up out of the gutter. Amen. And he put me on a solid rock. As a child of God, I know all my accomplishments. I know everything I came from. I know who redeemed me. I know what I am, but I know who made it happen. And that's God, not Jim. Amen. I know who made it happen. I'm a child of God. I know all my goals. I know exactly where I'm going, man. I know that to leave this body, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. I'm convinced of that in my heart. I love God so much, and for a man that went through what I went through, I should be a, a, a horrible, horrible, violent father. But only God can take a man and change it. Amen. Amen. If you surrender to God, I mean that. I mean, if you get beat every day, just because of how you look, I mean, imagine. You get called stupid, stupid, dummy, 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 stupid, idiot, 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 dummy, 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 stupid, stupid, stupid. You get called that every day, and you at some point are going to become that kid. Wow. But can you imagine if God can flip that? Just like a Joseph. They took him, they took their brother, and they sold him into slavery, put him in a pit, told the father he was dead, and then Joseph stands in front of his brothers. Now he's the second in command, and he's in Egypt, and he says, all that they meant for evil, God has turned to good. Amen. Sometimes we don't forgive ourselves. And though God already forgave you, man, you you're, you're clean. Amen. You've been set free. Thank you, Lord. You know, God's word is a constant encouragement for you. I want to ask you a question today. I want you to partake of the Lord's Supper with me. Here's my question. Ask yourself if this has become real for you or is it just a temporary lifestyle? I don't want to say what I really want to say is unless I mean, if you tell me what I will. Are you an imposter? Because that can be straightened out like this. Like that. All you do is say, I surrender all, man. I'm sorry, man. I've been doing stuff out of different motives with different things in my mind. But I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's not why... I should be loving God. I shouldn't be loving God because I need a place to stay. I shouldn't be loving God because I don't have nowhere to go. I shouldn't be loving God because my wife told me to come. I shouldn't be doing this because my mom made me come. I shouldn't be coming here because my dad made me come. I shouldn't be doing it. I should be doing it because I want to. I want to know God more. I want to know Him intimately. Personally, I want to know who He is and who I am in Him. I want to know what God's intended purpose for my life is. I want to know what it was. I know what everybody else's plan for my life was. I want to know what God's plan for my life was. If you had times or seasons when you've been hard-wearing imposter, 
It's like being a piece of gold. I saw a kid that had a giant cross. It looked beautiful. I think I told you this before. And a light breeze, I, I mean, I'm talking about a light breeze that came by and it was like flying like a kite with no tail. And you could tell it was a hollow piece of gold. Anybody follow me? Sometimes there's some of us who are trying, but we're not there yet. And that's okay. But I would tell you to come forward. Step up to the altar now and say, you know, I need the Lord, man. I need God in a real way in my life. I'm tired of just faking this out. It may have started out as a, as this or that, as a game, as an alternative, but I need God. I don't know it all. I don't know all the answers, but I need Him in my life. I'm going to ask you one more thing. If, if something has happened in you lately and you've been slipping, if you have been slipping, listen, you can tell if you've been slipping. If you've done stuff that you're embarrassed by, it's been embarrassing to you, and you wouldn't tell me about it. Find a place at the altar. And please don't come and act like you're praying for somebody else. Pray for yourself. I have a final call. This is it. If there's anybody in this house, you do not know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. This is how simple it is. Let me put it to you this way. God the Father sent his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall confess and believe in him should have eternal life. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want you to come up here and pray with me right now. Please, it's only seven or eight steps from back there. Okay, is there anyone? Would you raise your hand? I'll pray for you where you are if you don't want to come down. Come here. Come here. Come here. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty, folks. Coach, if I could just have you look at me for a second. Could you pray with me? Pray with me. Would you pray with me? Would you pray with me? Would you, could you pray with me? Would you pray with me? Would you? Would you? Among the people in the eye, would you pray with me? Would you pray with me? Would you pray with me? Thank you. Would you pray our Father? Father who art in heaven, oh, hallowed be thy name. Oh, thy kingdom come. Father, thy will be done. Thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Father, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who have trespassed against us and deliver us from temptation and from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power. Amen. I want you to pray with you. Say, Father in heaven, I come before you. I've had an identity crisis and I need to let that go. I've become so many people in one. I've become a little bit of everybody who had a part of my life. I need my own identity back. I am a child of the Most High God. I have been redeemed. I have been saved. I have been washed by the blood of Jesus. I have been cleansed by His Spirit. I've been given the wisdom of God. I'm an inheritor of eternal things. I walk by faith, not by sight. I pray, Father in heaven, that there would be a revival in my life. That there would be a revival in my life. That I would begin to see who I was supposed to be. See myself through your eyes. 
and begin to walk by faith in that manner. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Don't clap or anything. Let's just go to sing a song.
your word is very clear, Lord God, we do this in remembrance of thee. Father, we honor you every time that we partake of your communion, God, take it with you. And we remember your death, your body, that broken body, your shed blood. We're reminded of the resurrection, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are the only one, the only spotless Lamb that could take our sins, that could carry our sins, and the punishment for our sins. Thank you.
Yes. Father, as we hold these elements, please place a piece of bread in your right hand, please. We hold these elements that remember St. Paul as he's uh, recounting the story in Corinthians of the Last Supper. He goes on to say, And Jesus, on the day that he was to be betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he break it. He said, this is my body. Every time that you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you for dying. Thank you for doing what I could never do. Thank you for giving me life's work. So Paul continues on. He says, to have the supper, he says that Jesus took the cup. Thank God. And he says that this cup is the new covenant in my blood. So every time that you eat this bread and drink this cup, to remember the Lord, that he adds a promise, he says, till I come again to supper with you. As part of the cup. Thank you, God.